Welcome to another In the Mood to Scrap video presented by Two Peas in a Bucket. My name is Jana Werner and today we're tagging it. I have been pinning like crazy the last days. I pinned scrapbooking pages, cards, project life pages, but also inspirational pictures. Lots of these were just photos from tags. So I thought when pinning them, I really wanted to include those tags on my scrapbooking page that I will create and tape for the In the Mood to Scrap video series. And this is the mood board I came up with. I have different tags here with journaling on it, with stamping on it, just with some elements on it. And I have this card on the top left that has a lot of, um, not a lot, but quite a few banners on them. And I really like this composition. So I thought I wanted to incorporate tags. I wanted to write on the tag and I also wanted to include a banner. And on top of that, I wanted my photo to look like a tag as well. And now let's have a look at the page that I'm creating in this video. As you can see, I added banners and also added tags to this banner part of my layout. I'm using a black tag on which I am adding my journaling and I did this with a stencil, but I'm going to show you that in a second. The paper behind the photo and the tag in the center of the layout is also cut into banner form because this fits the entire banner scheme of this page. And I also sticked to the color scheme of my mood board, red, black and craft. This is a great masculine color scheme and it's a great alternative to those blue and green color combinations. Now let's get started. I have a few pattern papers and I'm only using scraps as you can see, or papers that I have already cut. I have two craft colored pattern papers. These are from Amy Tangerine from the Ready Set Go collection and this light piece of pattern paper is from Alison Craft for Webster's Pages. I'm going to emboss these, this piece of paper but I'm not using a big shot, I'm only using the embossing folder and then I press it very hard onto the paper and then I have just these small and very decent dots on it. As I mentioned before, I want my photo to be the size and shape of a tag. So I'm using the black tag that I already have. This was a pre-made tag, but you can do these very easily yourself. Just take a piece of cardstock and cut it into the size of a tag, any size you want to, and then punch a hole in the top part and then you're done. You can still decorate it, but I mean, that's really easy, isn't it? So I'm cutting the photo. And of course, I'm not adding a hole in the top part because then I would cut right through my husband's head and that does not look too good, right? And um, so if you have a motif, maybe that you can, where well, you can just punch a hole, I would totally suggest doing that because it looks really cool if you have this photo tag. But in this case, it would have looked quite awkward. As you saw, I added um, Studio Calico Mr. Yui's White Opaque Spray and I used a brush for it and I put the paper aside so the splatters can dry. I'm adding the journaling now and I have these Dear Lizzie die cuts which are from the Lucky Charm collection and these are a great alternative if you do not own a silhouette cameo for example but I'm using it as a stencil right now. I use a white jelly pen to add the journaling and this looks really, really nice on black cardstock. I move the die cut back and forth and spread the words on the tag but I, I keep the words on the right side. And here you can see a uh, close up these words just look so beautiful. If you mess up no problem at all. Just take a black pen and then you can correct um, those spots where you maybe made a mistake. I mean, this happens so many times and I know a lot of ways how to hide those mistakes. So this is one great tip. I am using sandpaper to alter the photo. I use it nearly on the entire tag but not on the face of my husband because that would look a bit strange if there were too many scratches on it. I, I didn't like, I would not like it. <laughs> so and 
To alter it even more, I am adding opaque white spray from Studio Calico and just spread it on the photo. And the next step, and um, just before I forget it, I haven't glued down anything yet, okay? This is just, I just put everything back on top of the page. I am adding banners and more tags. And the small banners are from October Afternoon's Travel Girl collections. And the, the tags, um, they are just from my stash. I don't know, they are not nothing special. Just like I said before, you can create those very easily yourself. I wasn't too happy with this very bold red background for the photo and the tag. So I put that aside and took a minute to think about what I could change on my layout. And then I decided to use a few stripes from that red striped pattern paper, which is from Lucky Charm Collection by Dear Lizzie, by the way. And I cut them into banner form as well. And I think this is when I first thought about Christmas. <laughs> because this, I don't know, I mean, maybe I'm reminded of those stockings that um, you have in some countries. Uh, you don't usually have that in Germany, but I know that from a lot of photos and I really like it. But okay, back to the layout. Um, you see that I cut the pattern paper behind the photos into banner size as well. And this fits much better to the banner theme at all. You just saw those black stickers, chalkboard stickers, and for a second I was thinking about adding those, but if you look at the layout, it would just become too dark if there was more black than I already have in the middle part. I want to add stitching to let the banner appear more real, so I'm just adding a bit of glue and then I'm sewing one straight line from the left to the right side. And I'm using just a normal stitch, nothing special. I did not stitch on top of the tag and the photo because I want them to stand out and um, therefore I'm using dimensional dots. And, and also I could not stitch on top of the stickers. I don't think my sewing machine would ever consider stitching <laughs> onto stickers or cardboard stickers. I don't know. I really don't know how some machines do it, but mine just wouldn't. I am adding dimensionals to the back side of the tag and from the photo as well. And I'm using five dimensionals just to make sure it looks even when it's on the scrapbooking page. Just like before, I am using one of those die cuts as a stencil and I'm adding arrows on the bottom right and on the top left part of the scrapbooking page. And I'm doing this to emphasize the left side and the right side. Also, this is a repeating element on the scrapbooking page which creates a harmonic look and furthermore it kind of frames the middle part. As the top of the scrapbooking page is quite light, you might want to emphasize the bottom right a bit more if you're using craft cardstock as well, because it looks, of course, heavier to have those black arrows on, an, on a white background than on a craft colored background. I want to emphasize the edges a bit more and want to add a few fun details. So I put masking tape on cardstock, used the stencil to add those shapes and I'm now cutting them out. And when you turn that cardstock around you have the masking tape backside and this is a very fun way to add more contrast to a page for example. I'm also adding rub-ons. These are from Pink Paisley. And I'm just emphasizing the top and bottom part again. And as these arrows, they are filled with black, so they are a bit more bold than the other arrows I already added to the page. A few more splatters to let the page appear lighter. If you do not like splatters, then you just don't add any. This page will look very nice without splatters as well. I keep on emphasizing the bottom right side of the page and now I'm adding stamped words. This is a stamp by Amy Tangerine. 
this is what the page looks like right now. I do not want to add any alphabet stickers. Instead, I want to highlight one of the words on my tag. And I'm using the white jelly pen for that. When I'm applying this yeah, ink or whatever's in there, I'm going in circles, not strokes. Because if you stroke, then you would see a small gap between the strokes. You might have some of them even if you do the circle. So what you can do is you take the Studio Calico Opaque White and use a brush to apply a bit of the spray ink. And like that you can fill those very small yeah, holes or whatever you say to that. If you again make a mistake just take a black pen and you can straighten the the letters or just cover any of the white spots that you don't want to have on your page. You might need to wait a few minutes until the spray ink has dried. Those big splatters they take a bit longer to dry so maybe you just leave it somewhere overnight and then the next day it's totally dry and you can put it into a page protector for example. Just one look again at the mood board and you can see that I incorporated ideas of the project but as well as the color scheme onto my scrapbooking page. I really like how the white journaling turned out on the black tag and to me this is a very masculine page but although it's quite high in contrast with the white and black craft and red it's still a playful page, it's not a very heavy page. Now here's my challenge for you. Get inspired by the tags and all banners seen on the mood board and include tags or the color scheme onto a scrapbooking page or any other paper crafting project. I'm looking very much forward to seeing your creations. Have a very nice day and I see you soon. Bye bye.